the definition of vintage, a subjective and difficult thing sometimes. This watch is by name part of the vintage line by Bell & Ross. But is that it? Let's dive a little deeper with this BR Vintage 126 from 2002. My name is Jan and you're watching The Time Channel. In my book, and please comment if you see it differently, every watch older than 40 years is vintage. And even that is maybe just a reflection of our current time and age, because I deem timepieces from before 1980 to be vintage. Everything from 1981 to the millennium is near vintage for me, but I cannot really accept those terms for watches from the 2000s onwards. At least, not yet. This definition is my own, and it is prone to change in the future. Nevertheless, this 2002 Vintage 126 from Bell & Ross is rather inspired by vintage watch designs, but it serves as a good starting point on the whole what does vintage even mean topic. Don't you agree? Let's focus on Bell & Ross as a brand for a moment. Founded in 1992 by Bruno Bellamich and Carlos A. Rosillo in Paris, France. Their very first watch thus would not even be considered vintage by yours truly. Neo vintage would be in the cards though. But you probably know them best for their aviation instrument inspired square watches, like the BR01 or BR03. But those came out first in 2005, so what happened before? Bell & Ross watches up until 2002 were always produced by Sinn in Germany, the household name for specialized watches. The earliest models mostly wore the Bell & Ross by Sinn signage, and it took quite a while before those were not just rebranded Sinn watch designs, but original ones, like the Type de Mineur. Still produced by Sinn though. Up until 2002, Chanel steadily increased its shares in Bell & Ross, until BNR finally set up their own production at the Chanel manufacture in La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland. The Vintage 126 exists since the early 2000s and it was available in all black, all white or cream white and this reverse panda dial, but always in a bi-compax layout, meaning two subdials on either side. Term often found but initially brought to life by Universal Genève with the tricompax, and it was also very much misunderstood because the tricompax had four subdials and three functions. But somehow this term tricompax was later on adopted as an expression for a three subdial layout, and therefore the two subdial layout was called bicompax by others. Are you confused yet? This one being a bicompax one is a design choice, since the underlying movement would usually offer a tri-compax layout. And if we focus on the reverse panda version, it's still worth noting that different versions of each color exist, the older version being powered by the Valju 7750 like mine here, and a newer version with an EDA 2893. When having a close look, one can find minor differences in the subdial hands, the position of the date window, but the most noticeable difference is the height of the two versions, the newer one being much slimmer. Which brings me to the case and dimensions of this watch. So we have a stainless steel case with 39 millimeters in diameter without the crowns, 46 millimeters from lug to lug, and since it has a domed sapphire crystal on it which adds another millimeter, we have a quite whopping 17 millimeters in total height at the thickest point. I guess that's the cost of having a very vertical bezel design in combination with the Valju 7750. We have a threaded crown on it with the ampersand logo and some nice vintage inspired pump chrono pushers. The bracelet has a unique sequence of links, almost like a reverse or thick ladder I would say with short outer connecting links. It has 20 millimeters lug width but tapers towards 17 millimeters at the signed clasp, also with the ampersand logo. And it is an overlapping logo here, which closes up quite seamlessly. In all honesty, the bracelet was something that got my attention as much as the watch did at first glance. Sometimes an extraordinary bracelet can be a large or just the final push towards a watch's purchase for me. And all in all, together with the bracelet, we have a weight of 148 grams. I think due to the height of the watch, but also the very steep bezel design and the high contrast watch face, this um, piece wears quite a lot larger than other 39 millimeter diameter watches. Like for example, in comparison, my Dubois Effi. It has a matte black dial with creamy white subdials. Together with the white tapered hour and minutes and the diamond tipped chronograph seconds hand, you already have a nice vintage aesthetic. The loom on my chronograph seconds tip is unfortunately chipped as you can see. Vintage you could say. But that's nothing to be worried about as it can be re-loomed and therefore filled in by a watchmaker, if you trust in a steady hands of course. And the 
the color of the loom might afterwards not be exactly the same as the unrepaired other hands, for example, since it is quite difficult to color match aged loom. Happened to me on my Dubois Effi watch, for example. The Reort is also in matte black, which in conjunction with the white scale and the loom dotted hour markers provides excellent legibility, as it is known from Sin and also Bell and Ross, with their focus on watches for professional use. The 12 hour and 6 hour numerals are doubled in size and also loomed out. A nice little touch of modern in my opinion. It is 200 meters water resistant and anti-magnetic as denoted on the dial and it has a date window down here at 5 pm. But I have to mention that the font of the date window or the date in general changes sometimes when for example going into the 20s which looks rather weird. Let's have a look at the case back, which offers a nice display window here and a view of the top grade value 7750 inside, which has a nice perlage on most of the parts or stripes on the rotor in addition to some um, blued screws here. It's maybe not as fancy as the one in my gram, but still something worthy of a display case back. Considering the price of this one, again, it is rare to find right now. My version is currently around 2000 euros on Chrono 20 24 without box and papers. I think this is a rare Bell & Ross design, from an era when the cooperation with Sin ended and the autonomous production at Chanel's manufacture started. A vintage high contrast design with a unique bracelet and a touch of modern. On the one hand, more subtle maybe than their square designs. On the other side, considering Bell & Ross, an unusual look, but only vintage by name, not by age. Thanks for taking the time and see you in the next one.